And now I am happy to give the floor to Mrs. Lubav Kostuva, who is the director of one of the most prestigious institutions in Bulgaria promoting education and culture, the British Council. Jenny, thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, it is a real pleasure while I fight with technology um, to say that it is really amazing to be here today. I'm going to take the microphone because I'm going around a lot. Um, I'll be speaking about something that we've been doing for the past nine years, in fact. It is something that addresses several things that came out in earlier presentations, and one of them is uh, the striking uh, image that I was left with, uh, skills that we need for the 21st century. Also, uh, skills for the 21st century do include communication. Um, communication is something vital to the way each of us think and each of us um, function. I'll use one of my favorite quotes. That's Nelson, Nelson Mandela's. Nelson Mandela once said that if you speak to a man in a language they understand, you will get to his head. If you go speak to people in the languages they own, their own languages, then you get to their hearts. Well, we're not at the heart yet, but we try to, we believe that with the work that we've been doing in Bulgaria and other places as well, we are helping yourselves as educators, as in the thought leaders and as industry leaders to reach to the minds of young people. Because the other thing that came out was smart cities need smart citizens, uh, the egg or the chicken. Truth is, smart citizens need to be uh, need to be raised, need to be nurtured. And we believe that one, we know, we've done some survey, that one of the things that smart ci that citizens, young people are looking for are role, role models. People, young people will become who they know. So it is a matter of asking ourselves, who do we want them to know? The new, the role models in science and, edu in science and technology as they could have seen them like this. Unfortunately, this is one of the pictures, one of the very early pictures that I found when I googled for Bulgarian science nine years ago. I am absolutely sure that it is different now. I'm showing this picture not because I have anything against this type of scientific output. It is only because this is not the kind of communication that will inspire young people to follow in the steps of their uh, older models. Now, this is a model they will follow. She's a mathematician, and she's a girl. This is a model they will follow. He's a chemist, and he was on television. They go to parties, and they're both uh, chemists. By the way, both of them have done some work as, as teachers at school, inspiring the students to love to start loving science. Uh, and they both said they absolutely adore teaching. He's a biologist. He's a botanist, in fact. Right now, he's also the spokesperson of the Agency for Food Control. It is really great to know that we have people like that, looks like that. She is a geneticist. She has been on the cover of Lifestyle magazines. Now, the chap in the red t-shirt is somebody who won a mini Nobel Prize for Physics. He's now doing his research in the United States uh, um, on uh, let me remember, it's something to do with surface, uh, surface tension of fluids. Her you've seen already, then you've seen, oh, would you that up here is a young person doing his uh, research in nano, uh, nanotechnologies in Uppsala in Sweden. Uh, Vladi down here is an astrophysicist who is the um, science editor of the BBC Knowledge. What they have in common is not just that they're beautiful young people, um, we have some meteorologists and more chemists down there. What they have in common is an experience they've been through, and that is Fame Love. Fame Love is a science competition. It is uh, the brainchild of the science festival in a small town uh, in the UK. It's called Cheltenham. Um, and when I spoke to the mayor of that small town, um, why he supports science, and the science festival, he didn't say things like, oh, I've loved science ever since I was a child, or my, my daughter is very into science and things like that. He spoke to me as a statesman. He said, well, you see, Cheltenham is a small town. To get Cheltenham interesting to investors, because we need investment to grow, we need to have, give investors a reason to come here. Now, a festival is a great reason for investors to come. 
and the science festival is the latest big thing in society. Forget art. Now that's where my heart beats because I come out of the arts and I would not like to see the arts just put um, behind the limelight. Truth is though, there is a lot closer connection between the sciences and the arts when we talk about communication. So, uh, Fame Lab started in the uh, UK as I said, but this is the pride that I have. Actually, that is something that came out of Bulgaria, the expansion of uh, Fame Lab, because I was the first manager of Fame Lab International. I spotted with a friend of mine, a colleague in Greece. The two of us spotted the excellent communication of three minutes of science on stage by real scientists, and this is STEM subjects only. Don't ask the trouble we've been getting in with uh, people from uh, the non-STEM subjects. Um, and we said, okay, this is something we need in East Europe. We started in nine countries in Southeast Europe, very soon to expand to places we never even dreamt of we would go to, like NASA in the United States, like CERN in Switzerland, like Australia, and uh, South Africa, and Korea. And the, the story just expands. What Fame Lab is about is basically three minutes of excellent science that has three um, indicators of success. One of the first one and the most important one is it is real science. It is not pseudoscience. It is the content is absolutely scientific. There is no compromise on content. The second one, the second criteria is clarity. And basically, in the international Fame Lab community, we joke that the clarity indicator is the Lubov factor. If I can understand, then anyone will. Not because I'm dumb, simply because, uh, well, I, I hope I'm not, uh, but simply because I'm not an expert. Now, why we need scientists to speak to non-experts? Simply because non-experts are the people sitting on uh, bank boards, on investment boards, people writing in the media, people uh, voting people giving their taxes towards the advancement of science. As I said, we've grown so fast that a British journalist recently said, uh, Fame Lab has grown more uh, uh, faster than the World Cup, the World uh, Football Cup. Forgive me, I don't know the real name of that cup. I'm not into football. Uh, but he did, he was, he, he is a huge football fan. And he said, it took the World Cup more than 25 years to bring on 25 countries for its final. This year in Cheltenham, 2014, the international final featured already 25 countries. And for next year, we're already having a big problem because there's too many countries on the board. It's not just about giving a science talk. What it really does is it connects young scientists, young, uh, young and upcoming scientists up to, well, we loosely say there is no age limit, to be absolutely honest, but we do say that we expect and have seen mostly scientists up to 35, 36, in other words, in their early to mid scientific career. Um, it does connect them to a huge number of peers from across the world. Where that will end, we have no clue. Because we expect this generation of new science communicators to be reaching out and doing international science collaboration beyond their communication as well. It has brought together so many partners from across the different countries that it is a true privilege to be part of the beginning of this huge expansion. And there are so many stories to go with it. To be absolutely honest, this is the, the best news that I've ever seen. I used to work in PR and media relations before becoming this director thing. Um, I haven't seen any, any project we've ever done attract the public, attract the media quite as fast and with so much rigor as, as science has. In other words, give the audience the, the, the format they would love and they're not going to leave you alone. Give the media a good story from science and they'll forget it's about sensation. They will stop calling it uh, um, interesting. They will go for real analysis. I, I'm sorry I won't be able to stay till the end of today, but I'll be going away actually to meet someone who's coming to Bulgaria to give out the first awards for science journalism ever in Bulgaria that are uh, now sponsored by MTEL tonight. 
this is a real big revolutionary step because <coughs> science journalism does not really exist in Bulgaria yet. So, to go back to my stories, uh, uh, politicians have seen results of uh, fame up. Um, uh, ministers have seen uh, results of fame up. We had no less than a Nobel Prize winner in the audience of this year's final in Cheltenham sit back and enjoy, and that was a big time Nobel Prize winner. He's the one who brought us the DNA double helix. He said he'd never, he hadn't had a better time in many months than seeing these young people talk about science on stage. I forgot to tell you the third uh, criteria of success, and that is charisma. It is the way that you present to make the audience want to talk to you after that. Story-wise, um, Fergus. Fergus is a young person from Ireland who this year, besides uh, winning uh, Fame Up International last year, this year, in January, was flown across the world to help out Pirelli in their annual report, because Pirelli, yes, the tire company, uh, decided to report on their annual results by bringing in young people in professional achievement, uh, in high-flying achievement in their professions from across the world. So all of a sudden, scientist found himself sitting <coughs> next to a, uh, to a uh, soprano who had sung to the Pope um, and other leading personas of the makers and shapers of this world. What I'll do now is I will flip through and I'll introduce you. Why can't this be opened? Okay, I'll, I'll play it in a while. I've got two clips that I'd like you to see. Um, I'll just a second. Obviously, it won't work now. Uh, right, Eduardo. Eduardo is a mathematician in Spain. He won Spain, Fame Lab Spain. He's ever since then. Uh, founded, he's been on so many talks that you can't even imagine. He's uh, founded a group, uh, a mathematics stand-up comedy group that he calls the Big Bang <coughs> Science, uh, uh, the, the Big Bang Theory. And they've been going from South America to uh, Africa, around Europe, performing. Do you know who that is shaking um, Eduardo's hand? That is Princess Leticia. Uh, who went out of protocol and went <laughs> approached to him, approached him to congratulate him after listening to his three minutes on maths. I will play you that clip at the end. <laughs> Women, a big focus of young people in science and technology. Yael is from Israel. She's a computer scientist. She did a brilliant talk too that I would love to play if we have the time, but otherwise you will see it in the loop of videos that I've left. Uh, in, the, in the corridor. Why is this so important? What we do is we find the talent, we train them, and we provide them with further opportunities to perform. In Bulgaria, that would be, for instance, the Sofia Science Festival that we founded five years ago, four years ago by now. Um, and there's been so many developments uh, everywhere. Why is it so important to education? Because these young people are not just role models to help teachers in their very difficult task to enthuse the young people in their classrooms, but also can step in and help because they are actual scientists. They're the ones who will be on TV, and to be absolutely honest, I pride myself with my phone where I have more phone numbers of a scientist that, uh, than any else probably in Sofia has, the result of which being that the media would usually call me to ask for somebody on a TV show. We did a TV show, speaking of which, and we put Professor Lian Berlitov, uh, an outstanding uh, particle physicist from Bulgaria, in the company of young scientists, and he loved it so much. And the reason why it is important to have um, the established uh, professors along with the young ones is because the established professors are the ones who also become the role models of young people. This is an actual conversation during the Science Festival this year. It is a great pleasure to tell you that uh, young people who go to the Antarctic, like this geologist uh, doing GPS, became the focal point of many children in the park this, uh, this year and they've been following him ever since. It is a great pleasure to, to share as well that the first show of the Science Festival that uh, was completely booked out this year was the Maths Show. 
It was uh, it was uh, for 250. We had 250 seats in the hall. We had to bring in an extra 20 because we had groups of uh, students traveling all the way from across the country from Vidin and elsewhere, and had booked the maths show first. It is a great pleasure. By the way, do you recognize this uh, setup? Isn't that Eduardo when he grows up? Possibly he is. I know that this young man has been around the maths and the other um, science uh, displays during the festival and I know that even if he doesn't end up in science, he will definitely be someone we will want to know. In other words, where what Nelson Mandela was saying, science is a global language and if we're the mind, we hope that very soon... So, <laughs> so I, I'm very amused because my former thesis was on awesome, great and uh, uh, Mozart himself was not uh, just combining melodies in his head. In his head, he had created the so-called uh, dice music. And when you go to his museum now, you throw dice that you comp compose like Mozart, but he was the one who prepared the elements you are combining. But what I hate today in the democratic education is that everything that kids produce is called cool or creative or music. You, 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 every, uh, every kid uh, command out and then what comes out of this is the class, the composition of the class. What? What music is this? So, <laughs> don't start me on. Creative, uh, it, now there is what uh, this uh, music is uh, representation of, is not artificial intelligence, but artificial art. And such is for kids to learn about structure by making computer creative, by studying the structure of the things they, they analyze, be it music or poetry or build jokes if you like. So, Jenny, just, you can. Thank you for the, the pudding <laughs> and the, the eating. Thank you for actually catching on to the debate that Yale opened.